Hello everyone and welcome to Signal Simulator. If you are watching this video, it's because you want to find out how to find your signal. So let's get started. Keep in mind that this is a game that requires a lot of patience. Okay, fair warning here. My FPS is horrible and it's because of the OBS studio for some reason. It just doesn't like my system or just doesn't like me in general. I don't know. <clears throat> but as you can see, I am running at a solid 120 frames per second here, but in OBS it looks like maybe 15, 10 frames per second. Anywho, let's get started guys. So what is the first thing that we're going to do here? First of all, familiarize yourself with your workstation. You got all this stuff to look at, right? Okay, cool. And it looks overwhelming. You're like, oh my God, what am I going to do with all this stuff? Relax. It's not really that hard. First of all, I'm going to show you that this little screen up here is really important, especially the first two values, which is system efficiency and charge efficiency. Okay. Um, system efficiency is, if it's dropping down, it's because you got a lot of things running unnecessarily. Like when I just started the game now, these two were on, this one and this one, and they didn't have to be on. But this is something that's going to be ironed out from the developer in time. They don't have to be on. Even if I leave them off and I go to, and I save the game and get out, whatever, and when I come back, it's on. It's like, I don't understand. And the doors are always unlocked when you lock them. It's just something that the dev's going to get to in the future, so bear with that. So remember, guys, these two numbers are very important. I already told you that system efficiency is if you have stuff running that you don't need. Sorry for shaking the camera around. I know that's annoying. Um, charge efficiency is your solar panels that are charging your systems. So as you can see, mine's at 86. You want to keep them in the 90s. But this one's dropping a bit. So that means I got to go out there and clean the solar panels. So you got to press a button and it just wipes them clean. Okay. So how do we, we can still find a, a signal with this power. How do we find our first signal? Let's find out right now. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is open up your laptop, okay? And then you wanna to come to scanner, and you're gonna hold the left mouse click button, whatever. Mind you, I just came from uh, consoles, so I'm not really a PC guru. All right, so you're gonna use your WASD keys to search for a little smudge. You'll find it as you keep moving around, there it is that little smudge and you're gonna let that analyze and this looks to be a star possibly or a planet could be, I don't know. but as you can see on the lower left of the screen you got either low or high polarization of your electromagnetic waves so you're gonna use your A and D to move right or left so we're gonna try right hopefully I'll get it on the right side because if it's not on the right side then I gotta go all the way to the left Nope, all the way to the left. Just my left. Right there, okay? So you're gonna hear some tones in the background. Some funny sound. So we're gonna press escape to get out of here. And we're gonna disconnect. So, second step, after you do the scanning, what do you do? You come to this panel down here. This is your frequency panel, what I call. And some people hit manual mode to look for the frequency. I'm lazy, so I just press the auto scan. As you can see, that it's auto scanning. So what you want is this green light down here to turn green. I mean, this red light down here to turn green, okay? Frequency locked, that's what you want. So now that we've got that, we're gonna go to the next step to coordinate detection control. We're gonna turn this switch on. And you're gonna hear that clickety sound. Sounds like teeth chatter. Like a little toy. Oh, there's a helicopter dropping off stuff out there. It's gonna be a little loud for a second. Okay, you want all these numbers to drop down, okay? Because once all these numbers come all the way to the bottom, and you wait just like 30 seconds or so, so it can stabilize. The numbers that you want to see is the average numbers. You 
got minimum, maximum, and average. You want the average for both azimuth and elevation. So what is my azimuth? Let me turn this clickety sound off. You can turn the audio off on that. Uh, we're looking at, let's say, 90, I like to round it off to the nearest 10. 90 and 25, I would say. 90 and 25, so 90 on the azimuth and 25 on the elevation. So you come to this panel here, okay, and you're gonna turn this knob on. So if you forget, always look right and look at it again. 90 and, uh, it looks like the elevation's going a little bit towards the 30. Let's just say 90 and 30. Okay, so you're gonna come to the azimuth up here. You got this is this these little knobs here are for fine tuning, and the lower the knob, the more fine the tune can be. And the higher the knob, the more bigger num big movements you can do. So we're gonna do 90 and 30. So come over here and use your mouse wheel or the letter Q or E to decrease values or increase. 90, let's put it at 90, and 30. So we're gonna come to the elevation and drop this down to 30, there we go. What's next? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and click start rotation. This will start the antennas to meet the coordinates that you just put in, those values. These are our new coordinates that we just put in down here, 90 and 30. And as you can see, I was at 205, 200 and something. So I have to go all the way down to 90, okay? And then the elevation has to go all up to 70. So this could take a little while. In the meantime, what you could do is, uh, what I like to do is you can actually turn this off to uh, be more uh, efficient in your systems. And you always have a look at these numbers here, make sure things are going smooth. See, my charge efficiency is a little bit on the low side, so I have to go clean my panels up. Um, looks like I got a ways to go, so maybe I should just go ahead and take a ride and get out there and uh, clean my panels up. Mind you, I'm holding my VR headset with my hand so I can use it as a mic because I don't have a, I don't have actual headset. I'm pretty poor, you know, guys. Pretty pretty poor. I like to close and lock everything behind me. It's always good. I don't know why. I think maybe an alien will get in there or something. Alright. Let's go ahead and clean that. As you can see, the arrays are actually moving. Pretty cool. I love it. Kind of reminds me of that movie, uh, Contact, with Jodie Foster. So we're going to head this way to the uh, panels. this little small box here, this little small panel, and go ahead and that wipes the solar cells, the solar panels, and it gives them a nice little cleaning, and you close this here, and get back in your golf cart, business and you can hear that the antennas are still moving it's almost there should be there okay so as you can see now that we clean the solar panels look it charges at 99% which is really good so we want and this one's almost done 35 34 33 almost there all right so now that we're there, what do we do next? Okay, now we're gonna fine tune. You wanna pay attention to this screen right here, the signal strength. See these two red bars, you wanna fill them up in green, okay? So 
what I like to do is I like to first start with the azimuth. So since we're at 90, um, we're going to go up 5 degrees just to see if it's up. If it's not up, then we'll just go back down. So what I like to do is I like to start rotation and stop it. Start, stop, start, stop, just to, you know, so I don't pass it. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Nothing. I don't think it's up there. It's going to be lower. Okay, so then since it's not up there, we're going to go to 85. Oh, there it goes. So now that you got a little bit of a hit on the signal, so that means you're getting warmer, you're getting real close. So you want to remember the, the coordinates of the azimuth, which is 90.2. So you want to put that in here, okay? Go up and put 90, and then drop this down to, well, no, wait, sorry. Oh, no. There we go. You want to drop this down to 2 because we're close, right? So we're going to hit. There we go. Okay, so now that we're at 90.2 and we have that little signal here, now we can play around to see what, what, what effect these movements will have on it. So, for instance, we're going to use the very lowest tuning, the smallest tuning, and we're going to go up a few hits to see what effect that has on that green bar. If it goes up, that means we're in the right direction and we can just keep going up on, on that. If it goes down, that means we gotta go the other way. Nope, went down, so that means we gotta go down. Now, that's the right direction, so we gotta go lower. So we can use this one now, a little bit of a bigger hit. About two hits. Boom, we'll do another two. We'll do one more here. Uh, actually, we can do one more. Okay, now that we're really close to filling up the bar, we can fine tune it with the smallest one. Uh, about two, three more. One, two, three. That's it. So now we got azimuth all the way up. Now we're going to work on elevation. Okay, we're at 30. Let's just go up to 35 to see what happens. And stop. And stop. And stop. Stop. Okay, so nothing at 35, guys. We're going to go back down to... <coughs> let's go to 25. Start and stop. Nothing. Start and stop. Nothing. Start and stop. Nothing. And so we'll try going a little lower. So let's go 20. Start and stop. Oh, there you go. So now that you see that you, you're in the hot spot on the elevation, you want to remember where those coordinates on the elevation is at. So 24.4. So we're going to put that here. Okay. One, two, three, four, and four. And hit rotation. Okay. So now we're close. So now we're going to do the fine tune things to see what effect it has. We're going to find out whether it's up or down. So give it a few ups on the finest tuning to see, and look at the green bar when you press this. It went down, so that means we've got to go down. Down. There we go. Okay, so now we can graduate to the next movement. And press down maybe two, I would say four times. All right. One time for that one. There we go. Now we can fine tune it. Almost there. You can actually pick up the signal right now if you want to, but me, I'm OCD. I like 
to have those green bars all the way up. One more, one more for the homies. There we go. So then now we can patch the sound in by clicking this down here, invert. And you don't get excited, turn this off. Conserve power. Now we got this downloading here. It's 448 megabytes, a small file. So this will be downloaded pretty fast. You can hear the sound. It's, let me raise the volume here. And you look at this panel here, it tells you what you're looking at. So it's a radio wave emission. Uh, Chthonian planet. I never heard of that. 56. It's downloading pretty fast. I got 7.2 megabytes per second. Always have a look at your power source, your energies, your energy panel. And look at these numbers. It's looking good. Look at that. 99 and 97 because I shut things off. I don't really need them. Some people forget, leave it, and these numbers start dropping. And then you get overheating issues. When my server temperature is at 65. That's pretty warm. 90 is when you, when it's overheating. But usually you want to see them around 46, you know, 45, 50, 65. That's pretty a little bit on the high side. You can do something about that. You can actually increase the fan speed by pressing, uh, I think it's boost or something. Let me see here. Add min. So I don't remember what it is, so I'm gonna press help. And to increase the fan speed is, yeah, turbo. So we're gonna hit turbo. And what that does is it increases the fan speed on the servers. So your temperatures might drop a little bit, so it'll be better. So we're going to exit out of here and take a look at our temperatures. And let's connect. And as you can see here, these numbers are starting to drop a little bit. So that's always good. Always keep in mind your servers. If they overheat, then that means you have to go and they time out. You have to go and reboot them, and it's just a pain in the butt. Okay, so we got a Xbox Live subscription here as our decoded data. Boo. I was hoping for something interesting, but it's okay. You're not always going to find them, which that's what makes this game very incredible. It's cool. I mean, um, the replay value, if, if you get something like a story pretty often, it would kind of suck. You know, it would defeat the whole therapeutic of searching for signals. You know, that's what this game is. It's therapeutic. It, you search for signals and it's actually quite fun, quite cool. Well, guys, um, I hope this uh, video taught you something. Um, definitely. Uh, oh, here, I forgot to mention. Hold on, I don't want to end this video yet. What to do once you're done searching for a signal? Once it's down, fin down, finished downloading, what do you, how do you go and start your next signal? You don't just go to your laptop. What you want to do is erase the whole thing here, basically reset everything. So turn this off, okay? And then reset this one here. It resets all the values. So now we're at square one again. Okay, and then you come over here and rinse and repeat. Go to scanner, hold that left mouse click button until you get a, uh, a, a signal and do your thing, man. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Subscribe if you want to see more, all that good stuff, you know. Uh, I would love to help anybody if you guys have any questions. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.